Hey there, how's it going? Uh, so in the previous video, I alluded to the fact that uh, there might be a bit of a pattern uh, with the gradient functions of a certain class of functions being polynomials. So let, let's just note the ones that we've seen so far. Uh, we have that when y equals x squared, when we differentiated that, we got y equals 2x. And I'm just going to write that x with a power, x to the power 1 is still x. Uh, we also did y equals x cubed, differentiated to give us uh, 3x squared. And then if you're a good boy or girl and did your homework, hopefully after a bit of tedious algebra, uh, you ended up with the gradient function of x to the 4 was 4x cubed, right? So these are all um, polynomials. They're all uh, x, uh, the, the, the variable, in this case, happens to be x, but the, the variable only has uh, positive integer powers. All right, now this isn't all because we also discussed the gradient function of uh, uh, linear and constant functions, um, and we can also frame them as, as polynomials. Um, well, kind of, a bit boring, but like x to the 1, still a polynomial, it's like a straight line, 45 degree angles, but still meets the definition. All right, what did this differentiate to? Well, it's a linear function, y equals 1x plus 0 in the format mx plus c. Um, so the gradient of this would be 1. Everywhere on that function, the gradient is one, because that's the gradient of the function, and it's constant. Um, and also, maybe just to help the pattern become visible, let's write that as 1x to the 0. Well, x to the 0 is just 1, so 1 times 1 is still 1. All right, and we also looked at a constant function, like maybe 1, and if 1 is a horizontal line, its gradient everywhere is zero. Now, let me just rewrite these again, a little bit funny, but one is the same as x to the zero, is it not? Now, this moves a little bit cheeky, but that kind of works right. Zero times x to the negative one, zero times one on x is still zero. So it seems to check out. So can you see the pattern? We have x to the power of zero differentiates to where does the zero go? Well it kind of whoop, pops out the front of the zero. And then what happens to the power? Zero goes down one to negative one. Okay, that one's a little bit funny. Um, but but you know, and same with this one even, it's a little bit funny the way I've written it, but you know. The, these ones seem a bit more proper. We've got a power of 2. The 2 kind of whoop, comes out the front, and then what happens to the power? The power gets reduced by 1. Bring down the power, subtract 1 from the power. Multiply by the power out the front, reduce the power by 1. So it kind of looks like there's a pattern. y equals x to some number. Well, what's that going to differentiate to? We're going to like bring the number down the front. Right? We're going to multiply by that number. And then we're going to subtract one from the power. So whatever that power was, we're going to subtract one for it. Mm, maybe. So it looks like that's the pattern, at least for this bunch of functions um, that we've encountered thus far. Uh, so I guess what would be a good way to check if this pattern we've noticed uh, is, is in fact maybe more likely to be correct. Um, maybe it has good, got good predictive power. So maybe we could try and, um, try and uh, pick a new number like x to the power of 5 differentiate by first principles and see if we get a function following this rule, right? Do we get 
if we had like a five there, five X to the four, right? Bring the number down the front and then take one away from the tower. All right, that's gonna be a bit boring because we're gonna do exactly the same algebra here. So maybe what other type of numbers are there that we could put in here? And we could see if it, it's, it works for other, other uh, types of numbers as well. So, so far, these are all, um, well, not zero, but they were non-negative integers. Well, why don't we just extend this and see if it works for integers, right? So negatives as well. So let's consider Uh, x to the negative 1. So x to the negative 1, notice, is the same as 1 on x. And let's see if this works. So we're predicting, if this rule works, that well, when it's in index form, negative 1 is going to come out the front, and we're going to subtract 1 from the power. So negative 1 minus 1 is going to be negative 2. And then... Um, negative one over x with a positive two. So that's what we think is going to happen if this rule does in fact work, okay? So how can we check if one on x differentiates to negative one on x cubed, r uh, squared rather? Well, we can use the definition and see if it works. Okay, so the definition is the limit as h approaches zero of put x plus h into the function. So this is our function, one on x. So put x plus h in into the function wherever x is. We're gonna minus just the original function by itself. And then that's all over h, okay? So that's recalling the definition that the derivative or gradient function is the limit as h approaches zero of um, f of x plus h minus f of x, the whole thing over h. Okay, so now we just got to kind of um, do a bit of algebra, um, uh, sorry, algebraic manipulation here, because again, we can't substitute in h equals zero down here yet, um, because that would give us denominator of zero. So we've got two fractions, that's not very nice. So let's try and combine them into one fraction if we cross multiply. All right, so we're going to have uh, this denominator times this numerator. 1 times x is x. We're going to have minus, and classic mistake, when we have a minus and then a fraction, is just as going right down 1 times x plus h. No, it's... Um, we've got to times the, the whole of the uh, numerator. like the, So distribute the negative through the whole of the numerator. So it's good to just write it with brackets. So negative 1 times x plus h, um, and that is all now over, just with this numerator up here, finding a common denominator of x times x plus h. And then that is now all over still this h down the bottom here. Okay, so um, if we were to expand out uh, these these brackets here, negative 1 times x would be negative x, so we've got a positive x and a, um, a minus x cancel. And then we've got here negative h. We've got negative h on uh, x outside of x plus h, so I'm just going to distribute the x and expand out. We've got x squared plus x h. And now if we're dividing by a fraction, this h is like h over one. So dividing by a fraction is the same as timing by the reciprocal. Might be a bit of an easier way to do the calculation. And hey look, this keeps on happening. We've got h on a numerator and h on a denominator being multiplied. Um, throughout the numerator and the denominator so we can divide throughout. So what have we got left? We've got negative one 
over x squared plus xh. Now, is it safe to substitute in h equals zero? Oh no, h is on the denominator. Okay, yeah, it's fine because the entirety of the denominator won't become zero. It's fine if h is like dangling down in the denominator, uh, as long as when we substitute h equals zero in, we, we don't, you know, do something illegitimate in maths. So we can substitute in h equals zero and put negative one on x squared plus x times zero. And I can't remember if the whole whiteboard fits in the shot. Um, so I'm gonna go over here, which isn't nice, but rather than going down the page, equal sign nice and lined up, but we do in fact get negative one on x squared as predicted. All right, so that's nice. Again, that doesn't necessarily show it works for all integers, but now that we know it works for at least a um, negative integer, you know, maybe this rule can extend as well to negatives um, as well as positives and zero. All right, so is that the only type of numbers? Well, maybe if you're a uh, year seven student, no, nah, they know fractions as well, surely. Right, so why don't we try a fractional power? So why don't we go for just what Evan's most immediate and obvious? X to the half. Okay, so of course, X to the half is the same as root X, which we use when we're going to um, apply the definition of the derivative. Okay, but let's see what we're anticipating if this rule will, will work for um, fractions, our fractional powers. Well, if we bring the power down the front and then we subtract one from the power, half minus one will be negative a half. And then a negative index will become positive on the denominator. So we've got uh, one on two x to the positive half and then x to the positive half again is root x. So we're gonna get one on two root x, maybe. Okay, so same approach as before. Let's uh, use the definition and, and proceed with differentiation by first principles and see if we end up with uh, what, what this rule, which is maybe the rule, um, if it gets us the same thing. All right, so. Limit as h goes to zero of f of x plus h, so inputting x plus h into the function. So the square root function, we're gonna input x plus h into the square root, minus the original function, root x, all over h. Okay. Now, it might not be as obvious what to do here, uh, because over here we kind of had, oh, two fractions. Nah, that's ugly. Let's get it into one fraction. Well, everything's already into one fraction here. So uh, there's not really anything we can simplify just looking at it, uh, because, you know, we've got two thirds, but we've got a minus in between, no times or divide or anything. Okay. So what we can do is a little trick to get rid of the, the square roots by multiplying by the conjugate. So same terms, but plus in the middle. And then if we've got something minus something and that exact same thing plus that exact same other thing, then we in fact have a difference of two squares. And so we're gonna get rid of those square roots. So what we're gonna do is times the whole numerator by root x plus h plus, oh, that's funky, plus root x. And of course, uh, if we times the top of a fraction by something, so our net effect is multiplying by one, we're also gonna times the bottom by root x plus h plus root x, okay. So, have we substituted h equals zero yet? No, we're not being lazy, we're writing this every single time. Some people like to be lazy. Every time I've ever caught, taught this concept, at least one student says, can I not write limit as h goes to zero? 
No. Stop being lazy. Have some rigor, discipline, focus. Okay, so this is going to make a difference of two squares, right? This is of the form, maybe I'll just make it a bit more obvious. We've got like A minus B times A plus B. So we're going to have A squared minus B squared. Well, A squared root X plus H squared, well, square root and square are going to cancel. So we're going to have A squared, right? X plus H, root X plus H, all, all squared will be X plus H minus B squared, root X squared is X. And then this is all going to be over H times root X plus H plus root X. This is almost getting boring. What happens every time? X minus X. Actually, it didn't happen that time. Oh, yes, it did. X minus X cancels out. And then now uh, we've just got H is our only term left here. So just careful in terms of the order of me crossing these out. Uh, maybe I'll use a different colour. Red, red, red happened before purple. Is that now all we've got on the numerator is H. So we've got a common factor of H in the numerator and the denominator. So they can um, get divided throughout as well. So we're left with 1 on root x plus h plus root x. Is it safe to say to sub in h equals 0 now? Sure it is. Right. We're going to have 1 on root x plus 0 plus root x. x plus 0 is just x. So we've got root x plus root x. So we've got two lots of root x down in the denominator. All right, and that matches up with what we predicted to happen from the rule, which is nice. All right, so we've seen that this rule that we predicted based on some information we already knew does in fact work for kind of other types of numbers. It works for um, not only zero and, um, and, and positive integers, but also negative integers and at least a, a rational number, a fraction. So I guess the next question would be like, does it work for irrational numbers or any, any real number? Uh, and in fact, it, it does. So we can get rid of this here. Um, now, because I told you so, it probably isn't uh, that satisfying um, at, at this point in time. Um, but we will be able to show later that this does in fact hold for um, all, all, all real numbers. But it's a lot easier once we know how to differentiate a certain other type of function um, to kind of manipulate that uh, to, to show this rule. So hopefully this is somewhat satisfying at, at this point that we've seen a pattern, we've made some predictions, it works for other types of numbers, so we trust the teacher that it, it works for now. Um, but for the sake of completion, later on we will in fact see um, that, that we can prove that this, this works um, for, for n, any uh, value of n. All right, so um, just some, some commentary on what this also doesn't work for. All right, so does it work for... Can I go in space? Okay. Here's what I've seen a lot of people do when they encounter an exponential function like this. Because you get in your head, well, what, what normally happens in the sequence of learning differential calculus will be that you'll learn the power rule for polynomial functions, then you'll kind of learn, which I'll go through as well um, in, this, in this playlist, you'll learn a lot of like uh, techniques that you can use, generally speaking, with derivatives, um, just while it's kind of, this is all you know, and then later on you'll learn how to differentiate other types of uh, functions, and then you can maybe apply those rules that you learn um, in kind of the, the easier context with just functions of this sort um, 
to them to other functions. So we will be able to differentiate two to the power of x later. Uh, but because because this kind of becomes the the staple of a lot of differentiation problems, you you, you get into your head kind of the way I verbalized it as oh, okay. Uh, what am I doing? Bring down the power, subtract one from the power. So a lot of people kind of see this and they go, all right, oh, it's something with the power, right? So how do I differentiate things with the power? Bring down the power, subtract one from the power. Bring down the power, subtract one from the power. No, 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 that, okay? Again, it's fair enough why you might think that if this is kind of the how you articulate it in, in your head bring the power down, subtract one from the power. But just notice that this is only when the, like I, I specifically used polynomial earlier, obviously this is a rash, um, you know, like th th these other types of functions aren't polynomials, um, but at least to, to put it in the your head of, um, you know, it's it's functions where x is, x is the base and the exponent is a number, okay? So this rule only works when x is our variable and, and n is a number, whether positive, negative, fraction, okay? So this doesn't work for this function because the the variable is up in the power and then the constant number is the base. So there'll be a different rule later on associated with exponential functions. All right, so um, let's just do a couple of, of uh, kind of straightforward examples, just uh, applying this rule. So now that we know this rule, supposedly at least, um, works, uh, we don't need to kind of go through this, these, these um, more cumbersome derivations, right? All right, pick a random number, x to the power of 13, and, you know, assuming the instruction we want to do here is something like differentiate this function with respect to x, okay, then we can simply bring down the power Subtract one from the power, done skis. All right, this um, isn't starting out with a power, but we can just you know use um, a bit of uh, our prior knowledge with index laws, manipulate this expression so it is represented with a numerical power, and then we can bring down the power, subtract one from the power. Okay, so this function is the same as one on x to the positive three is x to the negative three, right? Reversing how we did it here. So now that we've got a power, we can find the derivative, bring the power down, negative three, and then subtract one from the power would be negative four. And then this is the same as negative three x to the negative four will be x to the positive four in the denominator. All right, and let's do a different sort of expression. So I've got y equals cube root of x, so similarly to over here, let's first represent this function with a power. So this is x to the yeah. third. So now that we've got uh, our variable to a numerical power, we can bring the power down, differentiate it, and subtract one from the power. And then we're going to have to use some index laws to manipulate this. So I might put a couple of extra lines in here. It's going to be the same as that on one on x to the positive two thirds. Okay, so that's going to end up down the denominator with the three out the front. And the denominator in the power here, remember, is going to be uh, the... The, the value for the thirds, so that's going to be the cube root, and the, the, the numerator power is going to stay attached to the x. So the derivative is going to be 1 on 3 times cube root of x squared. Alright, so 
uh, all these um, functions, remember, what are they? They're the gradient function. So whatever the graphs of these curves happen to look like, right? you can find using these functions here, you can substitute in x values and find the gradient of the tangent to these curves at a certain point by using the x value subbed into those points. So remember, that's that's what we're um, that's why we want to find a gradient function in the first place to find the, the tangent at a particular point on the function, which maybe relates to concepts like instantaneous rates of change, like a rate of change, not on average, but at a particular point on the function at that instant. All right, and this is really just like now we've learned a bit of a shortcut and a quick hand way of um, of differentiating functions without having to find some new trick each time and go through some laborious algebraic procedure. Right. Um, so that's it for this one then. Catch you later.